Problem four. Two circles, gamma one and gamma two, have centers O1 and O2 respectively. They pass through each other's centers and intersect at A and B. The point C lies on the minor arc BO2 of gamma one. The points D and E lie on the line O2C, such that angle A O1D is equal to angle D O1C, and angle C O1E is equal to angle E O1B. Prove that triangle D O1E is equilateral. A clarification, a minor arc of a circle is the shorter of the two arcs with given endpoints. So let's build up this configuration in stages. We have two congruent circles. They're called gamma 1 and gamma 2 in the question, but let's call them the left circle and the right circle. And they have the same radius, and each of them has its center on the circumference of the other one. Uh, and we've now drawn in a few extra lines. So suddenly some red lines have appeared, five red lines and a green line. Each of the red lines is a radius of one of the two circles, or possibly both the circles. So those five red lines have all got the same length. Uh, we've also drawn in this vertical green line. Now, because the, uh, the top triangle, that's A, O1, O2, uh, has got lengths, its side lengths are, the, are equal, it's an equilateral triangle, and the angles in the corners are all 60 degrees. And the same applies to the bottom triangle. Notice that the line through O1 and O2 is an axis of symmetry of the whole figure, and there's a, another axis of symmetry, which is the green line, it goes like this, and those two axes of symmetry are in fact meeting at right angles. So what can we do with this? Ah, well, two angles have been marked. They're each going to be 30 degrees. And what's the reason for that? Well, there, there are endless reasons. Uh, it's because they're half of 60 degrees, um, or you can start arguing about angle at the sum circumference being uh, half the angle at the center. But for whatever reason, both of those, those angles are 30 degrees, and that's going to be very useful later. So just keep it in mind. Now I'm trying to uh, complete the diagram. So through O2, we've drawn this arbitrary line in red, which makes the circle, uh, the, the left circle, again at C. Now C is constrained to be between O2 and B, that's on the minor arc uh, from B to O2. Um, in fact, the whole theorem is going to work. The whole result is true wherever C lies on the left-hand circle. But uh, the, the markers like you all to draw similar diagrams. So it makes life a lot easier. So we have constrained C to, to lie on this particular part of the left circle. We've also drawn the radius in, the green radius from O1 to C. Now we've got lots of isosceles triangles uh, because we have lots of radii in play. Right, what we've done now is to draw the angle bisectors. So uh, there's red lines. So uh, this angle bisector is the angle bisector of A, O1, C. Similarly, the other angle bisector, the, the red line sloping down like this, is the angle bisector of C, O1, B. Uh, something interesting about these, uh, these isosceles triangles. You've got an isosceles triangle, and you draw the angle bisector at the top, then it's automatically an altitude. If you like, the left-hand side of this triangle is the reflection of the right-hand side of the triangle. So these angles here and here are equal. They add up to 180, so they have to be right angles. So this angle bisector is also uh, an altitude of the triangle. And that will apply in our diagram in 
for both of the uh, red angle bisectors, and that's going to be a useful angle fact we're going to use shortly. So now we've drawn in the red line segment, DE. And finally, you can see in red the target triangle that we're supposed to prove is equilateral. Well, it certainly looks equilateral, and that's promising, uh, but, but now we're going to try to prove it. Right, now here comes the proof. I want you to focus upon the, the red angle. That's the angle at D uh, of the triangle EDO1. It's one of the three angles of our target triangle. So we want to prove that the red angle is 60. Now focus upon the illuminated triangle. The angle that looks like a right angle is a right angle for precisely the reason I explained down here. What you've got is an altitude of an isosceles triangle and it inevitably crosses the base at right angles. The blue angle in the illuminated triangle, well, that's equal to the angle ABO2. By angles in the same segment of the left-hand circle, the angle A C O2 is equal to the angle A B O2. And we decided at the outset that that was 30 degrees. Now the angle A C O2 is the same angle as the angle A C D. So that's exactly what we want. The blue angle in the illuminated triangle is 30. The angle that looks like a right angle is, is a right angle. And therefore, the third angle, the red angle, is 60 degrees. And we've made some progress. Now we're interested in the angle O1ED. We want to show that that's 60. Now, a very similar argument works to the one before, but there is a little change. Uh, we focus upon the tiny illuminated triangle, which you can see. And once again, we've got a red angle you want to, perceive, you want to prove is 60. Once again, you've got a, an angle that looks like a right angle, and it is a right angle for exactly the same reason as before. You've got an altitude of an isosceles triangle. And so you want to prove that the third angle is 30, and that will do it all for you. But this time, uh, we don't use angles in the same segment. This time, we consider the cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, O2. Now, the little blue angle that we're focusing upon is an external angle of this cyclic quadrilateral. And so it's equal to the interior opposite angle, the angle O2, A, B. And at the outset, we decided that was 30 degrees. So it's fine. In this triangle that we're studying, we've got a right angle and a 30 degrees, so the other angle must be 60. So what have we got now? We're nearly there. You've got a triangle with two 60 degree angles. Therefore, the third angle is 60 degrees. And for most people, that would be enough to prove that it was equilateral. But uh, if you must, if you're going to be really pedantic, you might insist that, uh, 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 that because these two base angles are equal, those two sides are equal. And for similar reasons, those two sides are equal, and those two sides are equal. So the sides are all equal. Um, either way, that's the way it is. And we've got our equilateral triangle.